Thank you, Puvan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Um, on the day I learned that I was going to have to stand in for Justin Mundy, our director. Okay. Um, someone forwarded me a link to a YouTube video providing uh, the five secrets to being as good of a public speaker as President Obama. Um, I haven't had time to practice all the techniques contained in that video, but I have taken two takeaways. One is that always leave your audience with one clear message and repeat it as often as you can during the presentation, and that's what I intend to do. That one clear message that I want to leave with you is that um, Red Plus should be seen as an opportunity for DRSPO and for all its members, be they large companies or small holders, to implement RSPO at greater scale and in an improved manner. Um, I work, as Pouvan said, for the Princess Rainforests project. We convene different stakeholders to build consensus around solutions to climate change and natural capital depletion. And the first of those challenges we tackled as a team was um, deforestation. And in the past two years, we've been working uh, increasingly with how to bring the agricultural private sector and that solution, which is why I'm here to talk to you today about what are the links between Red Plus and Roundtables. And I'm here to talk to you about a different red than Nina spoke about. Um, the Red Plus that I'm going to talk to you about is about reduced emissions from deforestation and degradation. Um, countries, all countries that are parties to the Climate Change Convention have recognized that these emissions need to be reduced and urgently, and that countries that do reduce those emissions should be compensated. Now, Red Plus can be very complex, and there's a lot of debate. Almost everyone who you'll talk to will have a slightly different vision of how Red Plus should be implemented. There's debate on how those funds for payments should be generated from public funds, from markets, from a combination of both. There's debate as to whether they should be allocated to national governments, subnational governments, indigenous communities, companies, or all of the above. Um, there's debate on how to measure, report, and verify those emissions reductions. But I don't want to let all this uncertainty, all these questions, um, deter you from engaging with Red Plus. Red Plus is very young. It's about four to five years old. And in perspective, our SPO is seven years old. And it's still having a lot of questions to answer, a lot of questions and work through teething problems. So we need to have some degree of patience with Red Plus, but at the same time, it's quite an urgent issue. So again, this is an opportunity. Because Red Plus is so young, there's an opportunity for you to engage with the people building those systems at the moment to let them know how the palm oil sector can grow without further deforestation. Uh, quick step back, Jonathan Porat on Tuesday really clearly laid out um, the challenges of climate change and made the case that it is already happening, there's already changes in rainfall patterns and mean temperatures, and the agricultural sector is going to be one of the first sectors to feel these impacts. And we're not doing so well. Um, consensus from uh, scientists say that we emissions should be peaking at the moment and reduced by half by 2050 in 40 years' time. But last year, they increased by 6%. So we need to tackle all sources of emissions and very quickly. And red plus uh, emissions, uh, no matter which one of these numbers in this range you pick, is a significant source. So Red Plus is happening, it is happening at many levels. Uh, at the international level, it's been considered one of the most uh, successful or rapidly progressing strands of the climate change negotiations. There's been $4.5 billion pledged for early activities between 2010 and 2012. And there's a new UN institution called UN Red to assist countries moving in that direction. And there's an association of countries called the Red Plus Partnership that collaborate with, uh, on how to finance these activities and how to implement them. At the national level, there's a reported 94 countries that are working on Red Plus activities. 
Um, the one that uh, most of you might have heard about uh, might be Indonesia, which has pledged to reduce its emissions by 41% if it received international assistance. It has received an offer of support from Norway, uh, as expressed in the letter of intent, uh, in which Norway um, has expressed the intent to transfer $1 billion to Indonesia if it reduces emissions from deforestation. There's also many other palm oil growing countries that have Red Plus strategies, including Brazil, including Malaysia, including Colombia, and Western and Central African countries. Also, lots of action at the subnational level. Um, the state of Sabah is working with WWF to um, set a reference level against which emissions uh, reductions can be measured. Um, Famously as well, the states of Acre in, in Brazil and Chiapas in Mexico have reached an agreement with California um, under which they could sell their emissions from reductions from deforestation. Red Plus, why not? Unfortunately, in the past few months, there's been a growing degree of skepticism about Red Plus would turn out to be the transformative um, change that we need and that's largely because a lot of the 4.5 billions that have been pledged to be spent between 2010 and 2012 um, have not been spent yet. Um, we did a bit of research on this and wrote a brief report over the summer and it turns out that there's quite a few valid reasons and perhaps almost everyone has a part of the blame. Um, but again, I would just like to reiterate that Red Plus is young and we can work through all those issues. Very briefly, um, it's been difficult for donor countries to change the way by which they've been transferring funds um, to rainforest countries. It's traditionally been overseas development assistance that has funded projects or programs. And Red Plus is intended to move towards payments for performance at macro level and provide really high level incentives to change the structural causes of deforestation and incentivize countries to switch towards a low carbon development path. Um, the rules and procedures of both the multitude of donor countries and the multilateral institutions responsible for channeling some of these funds are, are varied. So each one is different, which makes it very hard for applicant countries and sometimes they can be very slow, and also sometimes they're completely inappropriate to the objective at hand. So there needs to be a lot of debate and revision of those rules and procedures. And lastly, in rainforest countries, I mean,